Okay, so we're starting off here in Photoshop. So the first thing you want to do is make five duplicate copies of your cover layer and the cover will be linked down below. So you just go to layer, duplicate layer and do that four times for um, your cover layer. And then you always want to save an original copy just in case you don't have enough duplicates or you want to start over from the beginning. So I'm just going to rename one of my layers original and then lock it so I always have it handy. So now we're going to select one of our layers and go to the quick selection tool and at the top hit select subject. So this tool does a pretty good job of selecting the main subjects in the cover but sometimes it doesn't catch everything so you just want to zoom in and make sure you have you know everything selected within the body. And if you have too much selected that you don't want included then you can just hold option and then um, click where you want it to deselect. Once you have both astronauts selected, you want to go down and hit add layer mask and then you can always double click the black mask and go in and clean up your edges. So next select a new layer and then hit the pen tool and then make sure it's on path at the top of the toolbar and then click and drag and click and drag to draw around the first astronaut. So you can click and then just move the pen tool and then click again but to make it kind of curvy you can just um, click then drag and then move to the next point and then click. And then so you don't have to get it perfect but I want to take as least amount, the least amount of um, of a cutout as possible from the background so then we can just preserve how the background looks. So this is a technique I use but you can also use the lasso tool and just draw around it. Sometimes though it's just it's not as like perfect as I want it to be so I just prefer using the pencil. So now you want to go up at the top to make a selection and then you need to make sure your layer is rasterized. So right click on the layer, hit rasterize layer and then go to edit and content aware fill and then now the astronaut should be removed from the cover. And so now we need to repeat this process for the second astronaut. And then boom, now we have our background. So now we want to select, use the rectangular marquee tool to select the parental advisory sticker and do that same process. Go to edit content aware fill and then it will remove the parental advisory sticker. And um, you can go to a new layer and select the parental advisory sticker and create a mask and then export that if you want to include that in your animation um, as well. So now I have my PA sticker, my background, and my two astronauts. So now I want to separate the two astronauts so they can be on each individual layers. So I want to go to, I want to duplicate this layer and then we're going to use our eraser tool to erase each, a, each astronaut from the from each layer. So go to one of the layers and then erase one of the astronauts and then go to the next layer and then erase the other astronaut from that layer. So we just want to separate them into two layers. Okay, so now you'll be exporting four layers. You'll have your background layer, your PA sticker layer, your Uzi astronaut layer, and your future astronaut layer. So we're just gonna export these as PNGs and then bring them into Adobe After Effects. So now we're in After Effects and I just changed the layer colors by hitting that color box so I can easily distinguish them. And so we're going to select all the layers, then right click and pre-compose them to create a new composition that will end up editing all the individual layers in. So we want to double click that composition so we can go inside it and then turn off the visibility for all the layers except our first astronaut which I named Future. And so we want to go up to the pen tool and start um, adding pins to the body. So if this is your first tutorial you're watching of mine, I have other tutorials where I go in more detail explaining how you use the puppet pencil, but essentially you just place pins on the body you want to animate. So um, like you place them at the joints, um, at like the feet, at the torso, wherever you want it to rotate and where you, wherever you want it to move its position. So like I said, go to my channel and look at other tutorials where I, I teach you how you can animate images and other album covers. I explain it better there, but I want to keep this tutorial short, so um, just follow along if it's confusing. Just place pins on the body, then move your timeline indicator, and then um, manipulate the position and then the rotation, and it automatically, it automatically creates a keyframe for you. So you can really customize how you want it to move. Like I'm gonna move his torso, then I'll place a pin at his foot and then move it so it can go like left and right and kind of up and down. So you can really just customize it to your liking. 
once you have a good base of pins and some good amount of movement that you like you can just end up copying the keyframes down the timeline so just copy your keyframes move your timeline indicator and then paste them along the timeline but if you want it to be like you have a lot of different movements then you have to like keep moving your timeline indicator and keep manipulating the pins so it's really all up to you on how you want to animate it but after you have um, your pins pasted and forever for the duration of the animation, repeat the same process for the Uzi astronaut. So now I have both my astronauts animated. So now we want to add some animation to the background. So I'm going to select my background layer and then I'm going to add the effect of turbulent displace so we can give it kind of a flowy motion effect. So I'm just going to um, manipulate the offset turbulence. So you see it kind of makes it like wobble and like um, warp back and forth. So hit the stopwatch to add a keyframe to offset turbulence and then adjust those amounts or move the cursor to manipulate how much it warps. And you can always go back and um, adjust the size and the amount of the turbulent. And whenever you want to see your keyframes on a layer, you can hit U on your keyboard. This works on both uh, Mac and Windows PC, I believe. So yeah, you can um, just move your keyframes closer together or farther apart depending, depending on how fast you want it to warp. So now we're going to add some effects to our astronauts to make the animation look more seamless. So we're going to add the wiggle position effect to um, our astronauts so they can kind of give it like an anti-gravity effect so they can kind of bounce, um, you know, move kind of freely. And so you can adjust the amounts to your liking. And then I also end up adding the wiggle scale effect so they can um, get bigger and smaller and kind of give it like an effect where they're moving closer and farther away from the camera. So now we're going to go on our back in our main composition and add the effect of motion tile to our um, cover animation composition. Okay, so we have our cover, so now we're going to customize it. So we're going to enable motion blur and 3D on our cover so we can add some customizations. So first, we can um, have it come in like rotating like spinning in because the cover like is kind of distorted on the original cover and then the deluxe is pretty clear with the astronauts so we'll have it rotate in and you guys can you know customize it to your liking in whichever way you want i'm just going to give you guys a few ideas on how you can animate it like i did so we can start off move our timeline down so it can finish like this and so we'll add a keyframe to the stopwatch the z rotation go back and then add a one in the value so then it can spin so you see how it's already kind of blurry boom and you can make it spin faster or slower add more rotations however you want so then we can also um manipulate the x rotation if you want so we can um x and y so we can add keyframes to the stopwatch here and then we can have it like kind of give it like more of like a 3d effect so it can be more immersive so we can have it like that so here's just an example of how you can do it and then have it go back the other way. Okay, and then copy that keyframe to get back to the original. And then you can also animate the scale. So start off like that. Then you can have it zoom out so you can see the, uh, the other tiles or just zoom out a little bit. And then you can have it zoom back in so we can zoom into one of them. And then we want to manipulate the position as well. So move that keyframe. So if this is confusing, just follow what I'm doing. I'm just giving you guys a base example. And then once you add keyframes and you actually like move the cover, it'll automatically create a keyframe to the position. So you can have it move in on him. Then go to the next astronaut, move it, boom, scale it in on him a little more, and then boom, have him zoom out. So these are just some examples of how you do it. So like I said, customize it. If you guys end up recreating this animation, I would love to see how you guys end up um, animating it differently than how I did. So it's really just your time to get creative with it. So now let's make the animation more interesting. So now I'm gonna show you guys how we can add some camera shakes. So we already have 3D enabled, so we're good there. So now we're gonna go to layer, new, and then go to camera. Okay, then go to layer, new, null object. Then we need to search for the effect of slider control. 
boom, add that to our null object, and then hit P on our keyboard, hold option, hit click the stopwatch, and then enter in this um, code. Wiggle, parenthesis, 20, comma, then you see this little pick whip here where my mouse is? Drag that up to the slider um, value. And then click our camera layer, drag this pick width to our null object. So this null object will be our controller for the camera. So now you see how we get like a kind of a jittery effect when we manipulate the slider. This is how we're gonna get our camera shakes. So click the slider, click the uh, stopwatch where the slider is, then hit U on our keyboard so we have our keyframe at zero. Then whenever we have like an animation, we can make the camera shake. So our um, rotation ends right here. So I'm just gonna move this and I'll make the camera shake after it's done rotating. So I'll just enter in 40. Like I said earlier, you cus can customize your own values. This is just one of the values I like to use for camera shakes. Okay, so we have 40, then I'm gonna select our zero keyframe, copy, paste. So then let's see. So I'll let it go a little longer so y'all can really see. So boom, we have some camera shakes. So I really love that effect. It makes it look so much more professional and, you know, realistic, like an actual camera is holding the animation. Okay, so now we're gonna add our finishing touches. So I'm gonna like enhance the trippy effect of this animation. And so I'm gonna add a RGB um, separation effect. So we're gonna go to layer, new adjustment layer, and then I have effect right here, but I'll just type it in again, RGB. Separation. So this is a Red Giant plugin. So if you don't have Red Giant, but you want it, if you're and if you're not a student anymore, you can. If you have somebody that you know that's still in school, or if you're a teacher, you can still get this plugin for only two ninety nine or three ninety nine for six months. So you don't need a, a school email either. All you need to do is just prove that you or that person is a student. So it can be a class schedule, like whatever. If they'll let you create an account in their name and you just give them the money, you could do that too. Or you can just get their schedule and da da da. You know what I mean? So that's just a little plug for y'all if you want the Red Giant plugins. So um, I'm gonna choose my preset. I'm I'm gonna choose heavy distortion, apply preset. So I'm gonna do it like whenever like the camera shakes or whenever I feel like it fits. So let me just go here. Okay, so I'll um, I'll apply a keyframe here. Hit you on my keyboard. Then just zero out all these values so it can get back to looking normal. And then copy, boom, paste, boom. So like that hints is like the trippy effect. Boom. So let's just do it for a little longer. Okay, so then just repeat this process um, whenever the camera shakes or whenever you feel it's appropriate and during your animation. And then that's really it. Um, as you see, like I have some type of like sparkles going on here and there. That's like self-explanatory. You can just find a PNG, like transparent sparkle on, on any free PNG website and then just animate the scale in. So have it start at zero, scale it to the size you want and then zero again so it like pops up as a sparkle. So you can customize and style your animation as much as you want. Add some, add some particle overlays. Um, just, you know, it gets saucy with it. I really emphasize this because I want you guys to like get creative with your animations and you don't have to stick to just one way like when you watch the tutorial you don't have to just follow what that person did that's how I learned like I, I learned like the basics and then I just experimented on my own and added my own flavor to it so that's what I want you guys to do and so yeah this is how the final animation turned out if you guys end up recreating it I would love to see you can either DM it to me or if you post it tag me at the RJ media also, comment down below other tutorials you guys want to see and stuff you want to learn. I would love to be more consistent with this YouTube thing, so definitely subscribe and tell a friend to tell a friend. I'm also learning 3D right now, so eventually I want to start posting tutorials on that. So as I learn, you guys can learn too. And so stay tuned for my next video. Peace.